हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर अनिकेत पावनोजी एंड यू आर वाचिंग बेसिक केमिस्ट्री वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ केमिस्ट्री ऑफ कोऑर्डिनेशन कंपाउंड्स इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव सीन द एविडेंसेस ऑफ कोऑर्डिनेशन कंपाउंड्स इन दिस वीडियो वी विल सी द थियरी बिहाइंड दिस कोऑर्डिनेशन कंपाउंड्स पॉपुलरली नोन एज वर्नर्स कोऑर्डिनेशन थियरी अलोंग विद दिस वी विल आल्सो स्टडी इफेक्टिव एटॉमिक नंबर Werner's coordination theory was put forward by Alfred Werner who was professor in chemistry in Zurich. In 1893 at the age of 26 Werner proposed this theory to explain the structure of compounds like COCl36NH3 COCl35NH3 and so on. For his untiring efforts over a period of 20 years in 1919 Alfred Werner was awarded with the Nobel prize in chemistry. Let's move to the postulates of Werner's coordination theory. The first postulate is each metal exhibits two types of valency. Let's understand this with the help of example. In this complex copper is the central metal atom and it is coordinated to four ammonia molecules and this copper NH3 4 is associated with SO4 molecule outside the square bracket. The first valency is the primary valency or ionizable valency. that is sulfate ion we know that on sulfate ion there is a minus 2 charge hence the primary valency is 2 it is called as ionizable valency because if this compound is dissolved in water the sulfate group can be detected in the semi micro qualitative analysis the second valency is called as secondary valency or non ionizable valency there are four copper ammonia bonds therefore secondary valency is 4 This is called as non ionizable valency because if this compound is dissolved in water in semi micro qualitative analysis there will be no test for the ammonia means the nestler reagent test will be negative the primary valency is non directional there is no specific direction for the sulfate ion it is just associated with copper nh3 4 complex whereas the secondary valency is directional because there is a specific direction in which all four bonds are directed in the space the second postulate is the primary or secondary valency is satisfied by negative ions positive ions or neutral molecules for example in nien3 en stands for ethylene diamine cl2 in this the primary valency is satisfied by chloride ion which is a negative ion and secondary valency is satisfied by ethylene diamine which is a neutral pi dentate ligand In the second example K3FeCN6 the primary valency is satisfied by positive ion potassium and secondary valency is satisfied by negative ion that is cyanide let's move to the third postulate a metal possesses a fixed number of secondary valency which is called as coordination number the secondary valency that we have seen that is copper NH3 4 complex that is in copper NH3 4 complex there are four copper ammonia bonds The coordination number is 4. These four bonds are directed in space around the central metal ion. The next postulate says that the combining power of metal is divided into two spheres of attraction. For example, the sulfate ion is called as outer sphere or ionization sphere because when it is dissolved in water it gets dissociated. Whereas the ammonia ligand is called as inner sphere or coordination sphere which is coordinated to the central metal atom. and it cannot be ionized when this compound is dissolved in water this coordination sphere is enclosed in square bracket let's understand this theory with the help of examples the first example is co nh36cl3 in this the primary valency is 3 chloride ions that is minus 3 and secondary valency is 6 that is 6 coordinate bonds in the second example the primary valency is 2 as there are two chloride ions but the secondary valency is again 6 that is five ammonia molecule and one chloride ion in the third example the primary valency is one but secondary valency is six that is four ammonia and two chloride ions and in the last example there is no primary valency only secondary valency that is six in all these cases the central metal atom is associated with six ligands with the octahedral coordination now the question arises how to find out that there are three chloride ions two chloride ions or one chloride or zero chloride ion outside the square bracket 
These compounds are dissolved in water and in the same solution a silver nitrate solution is added. In the first case there will be a formation of precipitate of 3 AgCl molecules. In the second case there will be 2 AgCl molecules. And in the third case there will be a precipitate of only 1 AgCl molecule. Whereas in the last case there will be a clear solution no AgCl precipitate is formed. This is all called as Werner's coordination theory. Let's move to the next concept that is effective atomic number. Sidwick extended Lewis theory to explain the bonding in complex compounds. According to Sidwick, the total number of electrons associated with the central metal atom or ion in a complex that is the number of electrons of the metal atom or ion plus the electrons donated by the ligands is called as effective atomic number. The donor atom acts as Lewis base and the central metal atom acts as Lewis acid. As per the EAN rule, in a complex compound, the central metal atom or ion will accept electron pairs from ligands till the effective atomic number of the metal becomes equal to the atomic number of the nearest noble gas. Let's understand this with the help of an example. The number of electrons associated with the cobalt is 27 which is the atomic number of cobalt. We have already learned how to determine the oxidation state of the central metal atom in some previous videos. The oxidation state of the central metal atom cobalt is plus 3. Total number of electrons in cobalt 3 plus ion is 24. Now there are 6 ammonia ligands and each ligands donate a pair of electrons. So 6 ligands will donate total 12 electrons. Now the total number of electrons associated with the cobalt 3 plus in this complex will be 24 plus 12 is 36. And 36 is the nearest noble gas electrons that is krypton. We can say that CONH36Cl3 follows effective atomic number rule. Let's understand this with some more examples. For this we will draw one table in which the first column is complex, second is metal atomic number, third is oxidation state of metal, fourth is metal atom or ion electrons, the fifth is electrons donated by the ligands and the last column includes effective atomic number. The first example is K4FeCN6. The metal atomic number is 26 that is for iron. The oxidation state of iron in this complex is plus 2. Now the metal electrons becomes 24 and there are 6 ligands which will donate 12 electrons. The effective atomic number becomes 36. In the second example Fe is 2062 plus. The metal atomic number is 26. Oxidation state is again plus 2. Total electrons associated with the metal is 24. 6 ligands, 12 electrons. Effective atomic number is again 36. Next example is chromium CO6. CO is the carbonyl ligand which is a neutral ligand. Metal atomic number is 24. Oxidation state is 0. Total electrons becomes 24. Each carbonyl ligand donates a pair of electrons. 6 carbonyl ligands so total 12 electrons and effective atomic number is 36. Next example is molybdenum CO6. Molybdenum atomic number is 42. Oxidation state is 0. Total electrons associated with the metal is again 42. Number of electrons denoted by 6 carbonyl ligands is 12. And effective atomic number is 54. The last example is platinum NH3 64 plus. Platinum atomic number is 78. Oxidation state is plus 4. Total electrons with the metal becomes 74. 6 ammonia ligands will donate 12 electrons. 74 plus 12. The total is 86 which is the effective atomic number. 36, 54 and 86 are the atomic numbers of nearest noble gases which are krypton, radon and xenon respectively. There is a great application of effective atomic number rule which is in catalyst. There are many complexes which are used as a catalyst and if any particular coordination compound has the effective atomic number as 34 that means it needs two electrons to reach the effective atomic number. It can accept the two electrons in a reaction and it can act as oxidizing agent. If for any complex the effective atomic number is 38, it can donate the two electrons and can act as reducing agent. This is the application of effective atomic number, but we will study this application in detail in some other video. Let's understand how to calculate effective atomic number for a dinuclear complexes. Here I am taking the example of Mn2CO10. In this example, electrons from each manganese is 25. There are 5 carbonyl groups which are associated with each manganese. Therefore, electrons from 5 carbonyl groups are 10. 
In addition to this, there is one extra metal to metal bond that is manganese to manganese bond and electron from this MN MN bond is 1. The total number of electrons becomes 36. That means this complex also follows effective atomic number rule. I hope you understand Werner's coordination theory and effective atomic number. In the next video, we will learn isomerism in coordination compounds. If you like my video, click on like, do share and subscribe my channel. If you want to mention something or ask something, mention it in the comment box. Also hit the bell icon to get the notification of my new videos and keep watching basic chemistry. Thank you.